<laughs> oh yeah, I wanna shoot, baby. Oh wait, before we shoot, baby, let me get them back. What's up, everybody? What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Library Live Book Club, the interactive book club meant to inspire you and encourage you to live your best life while keeping you reading, honey. It's your boy, Daryl Antonio Tomei, and as you know, we are still diving into the legendary, the iconic Dance Your Dance by Lorianne Gibson. Eight steps to unleash your passion and live your dreams. As you can see, we are no longer... Listen, we are no longer a scripted, pre-recorded notion because I can't, I love the, it's fun for some things. For me, I'm just not much of a scripted kind of guy. <laughs> so we're going to be doing these episodes from now on, or at least until I say otherwise, just straight live like we do our other shows. Live, loud, and in color. In black in this case, go be great. Um, sorry, I'm not going to keep plugging this because y'all can't buy it because it's sold out. But um, you can, however, go over to our Good Judy's at the Everything and Then Some podcast and check out their other merch items. But this ain't one of them. So anyway, this session we are going to get into set steps three and four of Lorianne Gibson's book, Dance Your Dance. And step three is train and sustain. And step four is stay in your yes. Now, last week we were gone. So we're going to give you guys a two for this week. We're going to do steps three and four. So let's start out with three. If this is your first time here in the Library Live Book Club, welcome. If it's your second time or third time, welcome back. Let's get right into it. For you guys who are new, we break these sessions up into three parts. The first part being the meet where we get into a fun portion of the chapter that we that stood out to us the most that we're going to like highlight. Then we get into the gags, honey. Now, that's the section that we get into that we pull a special portion out of the chapter to actually, that we're going to use in the following week to, you know, live a better life. And then the read is our final thought, if you will, from the chapter. So let's get right into it. Chapter three. Now, where we last left off for you girls who was missing, Lorianne is living in NYC she is an illegal immigrant, for you guys who didn't know, Mother was from Canada. Um, she came over at 17 years old with not much money. She went to train at the Alvin Ailey Institute for Dance and the trials and tribulations that come with A, being a legal immigrant, being broke, C, being a, trying to be a dancer, and things of that nature. So what we kicked out, or the last thing we kicked out... <laughs> <laughs> kicked out. That's funny because we about to talk about how she got kicked out of class. So <laughs> this is around the time where Lorianne, this was around the late 80s, early 90s. So hip hop was just becoming a thing and Lorianne Gibson from Canada had no idea what hip hop was or what that even was or like how that was going to become a thing. So this is the highlight of that time. So once she got her little spark of hip hop, she was hooked. She was taking gigs in hip hop, and it be, she began to embody all things hip hop. And for you girls who know who were around during those era, that years, it was the hats, it was the baggy clothes, it was the Doc Martens, it was the the uh, track suits. It was all of that. Lorian decided to show up to her ballet class with a baseball cap on and her uh, cowboy boots. Miss uh. Miss Ballet Fish instructor told her, ma'am, what are you wearing? <laughs> we don't do that here. Is that something on my face? Oh, that's something on the camera. Sorry. <laughs> um, kicked her out of class. Like, ma'am, we don't, we don't do that here. This is, a, this is an institute of the arts. And we do not do that here. So, Lorian was indeed kicked out of her ballet class. Um for coming in there thinking she was about to break dance and things of that nature. Um, she continued training even when she arrived at that space. She had, you know, took a couple of, you know, pretty decent sized gigs, but she continued to train in ballet even though she was kicked out of class. She was still in the Institute, but that class, Miss uh, Ballet was a plan with her. So the title of this chapter is again, Train and Sustain. And the thing that I wanted to bring out of this chapter, the read, of it all is training and sustaining. 
So this week, I want us to, as our read for the week, find something in your profession, whether it be your profession or your career, hobby, sideline, hustle, whatever it may be. Find something that you've been willing to or you've been wanting to for a while get into or something that you've been wanting to, you know, maybe branch off and try. Find something and really dig deep and research into that and bring that back next week and leave it in the comments and see, you know, how it goes. Trying to sustain is really important for me, especially in this era with this whole, listen, this is a whole new system we're working on. I hardly know how the bitch works. However, we are training in it. We are reading up. We are doing research. We are highlighting and we are doing all the necessary steps to make a better product and a better presentation for our brand. So that's what we're doing to train and sustain this week. Now, this week's gag. Here's this week's gag from chapter three. The gag for this week is when you're pursuing your dreams, worry and fear become a catalyst for faith and hope. I like that a lot. One more time for the girls in the back. When you're pursuing your dream, worry and fear become a catalyst for faith and hope. Meaning, okay, so let's just put, I'll just use myself as an example. Um, with the Library Live, I was, or the Library Live book club, this book club here that we're doing now. I was concerned about the, the scripting in the live show. I, that was something that worried and concerned me. Why? Because I know I'm best when I'm on. I'm not at my best when I'm reading from a teleprompter or when I'm, you know, pre-recording because I'm not the best at editing. And, you know, you got to edit and all those good things. I'm just better off turn the camera on and let me go. So what did that yield for me? In this case, it yielded me to come on here today and be like, look, turn the camera on. Let's go. <laughs> you can't let that fear hold you back from doing what you got to do. And today was the day I said we was bringing the book club back. And here we are. Boom cacking. No pun intended. Shout out to Mother Gibson. So you find something as well in your career and your, you know, or not. Maybe it doesn't have to be a career. Like I said, it could be a hobby. It could be a side hustle. Find something that you've been worried about doing and just try to do it. Go for it. What's the worst that can happen? But you mess up. And then you can get your ass up and try it again. Aaliyah ain't make that song for nothing. So listen, that's our chapter three. Now we're going to get into chapter four, which is stay in your yes. And this is the chapter I really, really like. So in this chapter, one thing that I pulled out of this chapter is Lorianne was booked for a huge, huge booking with, um, what's his name? What is his name? Uh, the guy who does all the black movies. I forget his name. But she was booked for the Malcolm X movie. It was the Malcolm X movie. Mama missed her call time. Mama missed her call time. And guess what? She was blocked out. Blocked out of the movie. They said, listen, girl, call time is at 8.30. You show up at 8.45. It's a wrap. You're fired, girl. And the sad and the worst part about that entire situation is it was one of she knew the person who actually had to tell her she was fired, which even makes it stings even more, if you ask me. But it made her stay in her yes. When she says stay in your yes, she means even though that door closes or you don't get that job or you end up missing out on this opportunity, guess what? You still have a purpose in that realm. You still have a a divine calling that you have to answer to. So you stay in that yes, regardless of the no's that you get. Another yes that I want to throw out in there. Did y'all know Mother Gibson and J-Lo used to be good Judy's? For you girls who didn't know, I'm here to tell you. So I told you guys Mother Gibson used to be a fly girl on um, In Living Color. You know, Jennifer Lopez was also a fly girl in Living Color. Come to find out, Kenan Ivory Waynes was the one who actually chose Jennifer Lopez over Lori Ann Gibson, and he says it was because she wasn't sexy enough at first. That's another no, especially for you girls who are in the entertainment and the dance world and things of that nature who feel compelled, oh, I'm not sexy enough, or she's doing this, she's taking this off, ooh, dip it low, pick it up slow, all that good stuff. You don't necessarily have to do all of those things to stay in your yes. 
If your yes is not dipping it on picking it up so, then guess what? You don't have to dip it low or pick it up so because that is not your yes. Her yes may not be your yes. And that is a message in itself. So the read for this chapter, chapter four, which is stay in your yes, is to find your yes. Find your yes. Everybody has a different yes. My yes, like I said, doesn't have to be your yes. So find your yes and find a way to stay in it, regardless of the trials, tribulations, and things that nature that may come your way. Now, this week's gag for the stay in your yes, and this is a really simple one. It's short and sweet. It is three whole words. Faith over fear. And I'm speaking to myself when I say faith over fear, and I'm hoping I'm speaking to somebody else. You cannot allow your fear to waver your faith. You stay in that faith and you stay in that yes, regardless of how nervous it may make you, jump. Jumping, and if you fall on the way down, guess what? Once you get down there, after you get up and things of that nature, there's going to be another cliff for you to jump off of, regardless. So, you might as well get prepared for the next jump. That's what staying your yes is all about. And also train and sustain, which is the last um, the last chapter that we just went over. So, oh, I hate that feature. Anywho, I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's small session. I love these little small sessions. They're super cute. This is like a 15-minute little snippet of Dance Your Dance, Eight Steps to Unleash Your Passion, and Live Your Dreams by the legend Lori Ann Gibson. If you haven't picked up your copy, get into it. They are wherever books are sold. If you're one of them electronic girls who like to listen to the books, you go for it. But listen, honey, I need I need to feel paper when I read. I need to feel paper between my fingertips and things of that nature. So get your copies. They're available now. Shout out to Lori Ann Gibson. I think I'm going to send her this episode because this was a really good, short, simple episode. I'm going to send it to her. Like, girl, come on on the show and come kiki with us here in the library. So that's that. I love you guys for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed this snippet. Make sure you check out the book if you haven't already. And we will see you guys next Friday for another session on the Library Live Book Club. Peace and blessings. Now I got to get over here and do this shit. Here we go. <laughs>